By now, most people have heard of Toxoplasma gondii, which is the parasite that apparently turns people into crazy cat ladies. This has become a popular subject in science news and also at dinner parties where for some reason it's acceptable to talk about cat shit. T. gondii is one of those things that really seems to fascinate people, probably for a number of reasons. It seems to have mind control powers, it can affect humans, and the vector is a furry little animal that most of us have in our homes right now. T. gondii actually infects mice, but it can only reproduce in the digestive tract of cats. So it causes the mice to be less afraid of cat urine or to be very forgetful, all things that might lead to it being more likely to be consumed by a cat. And the parasite's eggs are then pooped out by the cat. Humans can com come into contact with those eggs and become infected by scooping cat litter or gardening or playing in sand pits, AKA cat public toilets, or doing some other cat poop related activity. I don't, I don't pretend to know your life. It's a pretty successful parasite at this point, thanks in part to us idiot humans who allow our pet cats to go wandering around in the wild where they can encounter infected mice. Reminder, have your cat spayed or neutered and keep him or her inside where it's safe and warm and he or she is less likely to murder small animals or be murdered by large cars. Now, a lot of humans are wandering around with T. gondii infections, and past studies have suggested that it might have similar effects on humans as to the effects it has on mice. Not so much the being not afraid of cat pee, but the thing about memory problems and also uh, some more serious psychological issues like schizophrenia, OCD, and severe depression. All of this is news again thanks to one new study involving more than 838-year-old New Zealanders that actually found no link between T. gondii and many of the problems we've come to associate it with through past studies. Things like depression and uh, schizophrenia, traffic accidents, personality changes, all of it had no correlation. They did find one very tenuous correlation with suicide attempts and a single memory test. But besides those very, very, very tiny correlations, they found nothing. It's worth noting that this single study, even though it's quite large, doesn't immediately negate all of the previous studies. It's also worth noting that about 200 people didn't turn up for this study because they were either already dead or their blood tests were botched or they just didn't show up for some reason. This was part of a larger study of about a thousand New Zealanders that was following them as they aged. So amongst those 200 people that didn't show up, they were more statistically likely to have schizophrenia, depression, and criminal convictions. So had that data been able to be included in this study, maybe the results would be a little different. It's also worth remembering that even if this study is valid and there is no link between T. gondii and psychological problems, there are still many physical problems associated with an infection, especially for people who are pregnant or immunocompromised. So please don't take this as uh, permission to go out into the world and start playing with feral cat shit. I mean, why, why were you doing that anyway? You know what? I don't want to know. So please keep all of that in mind when you read news stories about this study. Uh, one final thing, um, I just wanted to mention that I got a new hoodie for Brendan. I think it's great. And uh, I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with T. gondii and whether or not it turns people into crazy cat ladies. It's just, just a cool new hoodie. Just wanted to show it off. <laughs>